the Embassy of the Blessed Kingdom of God for all nations. The Embassy of the Blessed Kingdom of God for all nations is the largest evangelical church in all of Europe. Located in Kyiv, Ukraine, the church in its nine years of existence has seen more than one million people accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There are more than 20,000 members who regularly attend the church services. The social work of the Embassy of God is accepted by the Ukrainian government. During the next 30 minutes, you have the opportunity to encounter the living God. We believe this program will help you to develop your relationship with Him. Jesus forgives every sin, sets people free from addictions, heals every sickness, brings harmony to your family and prosperity to your business. Only God can bring a real solution to the situation you are in and give the answer to your every question. He can help you to fulfill the calling and destiny that is waiting for you. You are welcome to visit the Embassy of God webpage at www.godembassy.org or write us at tv at godembassy.org. You're watching the Embassy of God program. You're watching the Embassy of God program. to study because I was growing up in a very poor family and I didn't have money to go to the university. So the government of our country sometimes gives scholarship to pay for your education to choose any country in the world where you want to go and study. So I chose uh, uh, Russia because I didn't know anything about Russia. And when I was a Christian, just six months before I came, I went to the pastor and said, what do you think? You should cannot go to Russia. So he said, if you are a Christian, you go to Russia, it will be difficult. But if you survive it, God will help you and God will use you. And that's what has happened now. Do ask with you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I came here to study journalism. So I was studying journalism in the university. And uh, I studied the language first for one year. Then uh, I went to study journalism. So I got my master's degree in Belarus, in Minsk. And uh, after then, the Lord, I came here to work as a journalist at the television station. Then, uh, then the Lord spoke to me in 1994 to begin the church. I was Christian. Yeah, I became a Christian in Africa six months before coming here. So I came here into communism and uh, I needed to survive in the underground church and everything. When I was in the university, it was difficult to, to be a pastor because communism prohibited it. So it was not possible to talk about God. And because it was a crime, you could be arrested for that. And so I was just studying and I was seeking the, the Lord, praying, and uh, you know, getting to know God better. I was developing myself in the Word of God in my prayers and in my relationship with the Lord. When communism finished, it became easier. It became freedom came. So I could now much more boldly and freely talk to, Jesus, I mean, to people about Jesus. You're watching the Embassy of God program. Historically, Kiev is supposed to be a city where uh, all Russia started from. 
Russian history started from here. So, so they call it the mother, the city, the city mother of Russia. So this is like the symbol of Russia. It is the mother of Russia, and uh, so it's very, it has a very big significance to the Russian people and to Russian and Ukrainian people. So uh, they have ancient and old churches here, and those churches make people to be very religious. So they they count themselves after communism collapsed, they count themselves to be believers, Christians, and. Uh, uh, but they are orthodox believers. So, uh, uh, but so when they see people like me and come to preach the gospel, you know, they feel this is a foreign religion, and this is a, maybe it's not a, it's not it's a Western religion. So it's not it's a Protestant movement. So they are kind of oppose it. But the ordinary people who are thought that there was no God and that uh, now who are brought up during communism. They are hungry for God to see the light and to get the truth. So we see a lot of people coming to God. And, uh, and of course, you know, Kyiv is the capital of Ukraine politically and economically also is the economic center and the political center of Ukraine. And these are the Orthodox churches. Historic places in the country that uh, that symbolize the country of or the the influence of the Orthodox Church. All these places were built before communism, and uh, the people, you know, still come there now because they want to go back to their origin. They want to go back to their history. So people are looking for God, and they come to wed, and the, the people are getting married. They want to come to near the church and uh, get themselves associated with something God, religious. time God spoke to me was uh, when I was in Belarus I was in the university I had a dream three times three days almost the same dream I saw myself in before on a big stage and speaking to a big population about thousands of people hundreds of thousands of people and I was preaching to them the gospel and uh, and I could hear God saying I'm anointing you to go and preach good news to the poor uh, healing to the to the sick in the heart and uh, blind to see for the sight for the blind and all that. So that was how I received the call to be, to become a minister. Every day I walk with God. That's it. Ой, <laughs> А кто, кто, кто тут не украинец? Значит, мы будем, мы пощадим вас, мы, мы не будем говорить украинское мову. Уважительная причина у меня сегодня появилась. Дуже добрый. Здравствуйте. Как дела у нас, ребята? Хорошо? Хорошо, что вы пришли. А ты с Андреем? Как ваши дела? Отлично. Все нормально, да? 
Слава Господу. Ну что ж, сколько у нас это? Почти есть 130. 130, да? Ты уже сообщили им, что 130, да? А дец вы дец Вон, Туда, сюда. You're watching the Embassy of God program. I'm preparing for a live broadcast, a live television program right now. I'm doing the makeup before going on air. And uh, the program today is going to be devoted and dedicated to the male men in the society. Because of communism, the men uh, figure has been uh, disdained by depression, and uh, by oppression of communism. So men started to drink and to leave their families. But uh, now we feel that the church is the only power and the only force that will be able to restore that uh, in the society and make the men to be responsible, to be faithful to their husbands, I mean to their wives and to their children. And uh, we hope that uh, many people will see us today. People who need to hear the word will be able to put on the television at the right time and also so that, uh, uh, apart from that, uh, we could also speak to the needs of the people and get good response from them. So only God can do that. What I can do is to do program, but only God can touch the heart of man. <laughs> Communism used to speak a lot about equality of uh, everybody. So it was not thought that uh, the husband is the head of the family. So everybody say, I'm, I'm, free, I'm the same. And uh, so actually during communism, communism tried to suppress the men, uh, the men, so that they will not be violent, so that they will not go against the system, against communism. So uh, though the men, the women were encouraged to take authority and power over their families. So it was difficult. So now we have to reverse that and make the uh, ladies to realize and to recognize that the husband is the head and to be obedient to their husbands and to respect them. And for the husband not to suppress the, the, the wives, but also, also recognize that they are equal, but they have to be loved and they have to respect them. Здравствуйте, дорогие телезрители! Мы хотим сказать, что вам повезло еще раз попадать в передачу сегодня. Я хочу позвать и бросать вызов всем женщинам, всем матерям. Позовите, пожалуйста, всех ваших а, мужчин дома. Позовите мужей, позовите ну, сыновей, позовите... А, но все, кто у вас дома есть, потому что сегодня у нас в студии собраны мужчины на вещего призвания. Люди, которые хотят доказать и показать Украине, что можно менять эту страну, если только мужчина и фигура мужской в обществе будет реформирована. Внимание, ребята! Меня зовут Сергей. Миша, кто там? У меня а, такая да. же судьба, как и у этих ребят. And we we'll also expect to receive some calls, uh, live call, television calls on the program, and it will help a lot of people to see the truth about how God could restore manhood uh, in our society. The only problem we have is not too many people can get through to call through to the direct line because many people are really willing to call many millions of people are watching. It's one of the best rated program on the television in Ukraine now. Zara Dite Vajva Pros. Hello? Sarvao, sir. Zara Dite Vajva Pros. Da. Uh, we have a new project. Yes, Lishu. Da. Because I'm a journalist, I, I, it helps me to do a better quality uh, programs, not just to preach and not just to come on with the one head, speaking head, as we say, but uh, because, uh, you know, of my journalistic fantasy, 
so I could make it much more freely and much more boldly. So we are doing it not like purely religious program. We're doing like a show program, but then the idea and the ideal and the ideology behind, that we proclaim is the Christian ideology. So we talk about Jesus, about the Bible, and about the standard of God. And, uh, but we also do it in such a way that it will be interesting for any, any secular person to watch. So people give their testimonies. He was in prison three times and uh, you know, so many years. All these people have been in prison because they are young people who couldn't find themselves in life. They are looking for something and they couldn't find a figure, a righteous figure, a figure of, uh, of honor, of integrity until they came to see Jesus. So the people were calling and saying, you know, different kind of questions. And then some of them were saying, why is it that the medicine couldn't help? Why is it these people were drug addicts before? Why is it that medicine is helpless? Why is it that you could help? So I was saying, we cannot help, God could help. So they were saying, what about the, you know, the extrasensoric people? Maybe the people with medicine, with uh, non-traditional medicine could help. So people were testifying, they were saying, we were in different religion. So some people were saying, why do you think only Christianity could help? We want to be free, everybody is free to go to any religion. So we were saying, Jesus said, it's only Jesus who could make it. Then other people who were in different religion before, they were saying, we tried everything else also, and nothing could help. So people ask different kind of questions. Then some of them call and say, thank you, pastor. Thank you for doing this for our country. Thank you for changing the lives of the people. And some people are asking, what about uh, Orthodox religion? We have the Orthodox priest here, and he's the interact in like uh, the... Uh? I am from uh, Ukraine. Grand Prince from Kiev, Chernyu from Karachi. From, from the, like, uh, from the, from the monarchy, from the, yeah, from the kingly history. They believe in what we preach. They believe in the power of the gospel. They believe in Jesus. So they say, this guy is telling the truth. He's preaching just the word of God. So we should support him. So they come to support him. Watching the Embassy of God program. And uh, sometimes the Orthodox people, they call and they attack us on television because I allow everybody to call. So they call and say, what are you doing? Why should you come here? We don't need black men to talk to us. You know, black men just received Jesus and Christianity 200 years ago. And our country has been Christian country for, for 2,000 years. I mean, for 1,000 years because I raised the topic of God. So I point the show to Jesus. And I tell everybody that I don't have anything to do with it. And that is true. I don't have anything to do with it. That's the truth. So uh, I don't need to be, there's nothing to be proud of. It's Jesus doing it. And that's why I don't just speak myself. I don't just speak, I mean, I don't just preach alone. I give the people the opportunity to talk about Jesus, what Jesus has done for them. So it's not just me talking so that they will know it's not about me. Let them talk. It's about the encounter of people, ordinary people with Jesus.
in the year 2000, our church was 8,000 people. And uh, we were growing, and I didn't know what to do with all the people, how to cope with them. So as I was praying one time, uh, and listening to some cassettes, uh, God gave me a dream. And in the dream, I saw Jesus talking to the 12 disciples. And I was there, and I could hear Jesus telling me, just do like me. So from there, we started the 12. If we had not been big in fear, they would have stopped us, destroyed us. All the KGB, the Orthodox Church, and uh, the people who are against foreigners, the nationalists. But because we are big, we are too many, so we are undestructible. Undistruct so bigness is good for the church. When we all come together and we are many, the people who come from the street, this is not a a small religious uh, cult, but these, uh, these are normal people here. They are many, not just small group of 10 people. So it has yeah, advantages in being big. But because when you are big also, you, not everybody has the attention of the pastor. Uh, so because of that, we also divide the church into smaller fragments. So in our church, we have a system of small groups. All the 20,000 people are divided into small groups of 12 people. So we have like, Everybody is, is in a group of 12, where there is a pastor, an assistant pastor to care, to care for them. So we are both big and divided. Big enough to take everybody and small enough to care for everybody. Watching the Embassy of God program. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered together, God is there with them. But unfortunately, for people in the body, physical body, it's impossible to see Him because He's spirit. So He's assuring us if we come together in His name, He's guaranteeing us that I'm there. You can open your spiritual eyes and see Him. And uh, we can feel Him also. We can touch Him in the Spirit. So, we are just worshipping Him now. And uh, giving Him praise and thanking Him for everything He's done in our lives. For everything He's going to do today. And we are praying that He will come and teach us and help us and uh, minister his word to us. I never knew where Ukraine and Kiev was uh, several years ago when I was growing up in Africa. So there is no way I could have come here to make church myself. The first time when God told me that I should start the church here, I was praying and saying, God, it's not possible. I mean, I don't believe nobody will come and listen to me. I mean, they call us monkey, they call us chocolate, and uh, nobody will listen to me. So I discovered that the journalist uh, carries only the news that happen in the world. And mainly, it is bad news. If you go to CNN, it's only, always where the war is going on in Afghanistan, about the crisis in America, about the corruption in the government, about uh, journalists are specialists in carrying bad news. But God introduced me to the good news. So I decided to leave the bad news for the good news. So I think the good news changes the world better than the bad news. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. You have been watching a program 
from the Embassy of the Blessed Kingdom of God for all nations in Kyiv, Ukraine. If you want to become a part of God's growing movement in Ukraine, then we suggest you do the following. First, come and visit the main events of the Embassy of God, our yearly nationwide anniversary conference, our summer and winter pastors' fasts, which are visited by over 1,000 pastors and ministers from all around the world, our pastors and leaders' seminars that are held by Pastor Sunday twice a year, our annual men's conference, our monthly anointing service for all Embassy of God churches in Kyiv on the first Sunday of each month, and also our annual March of Life on the main street of Kyiv, which had about 50,000 believers in the year 2003. Second, we suggest that you come to Kyiv at any time and visit church services every Sunday and Thursday, topical night prayers, a different theme every night, general night prayers every Friday night, homeless shelter and clinic open every day, rehabilitation center for alcoholic and drug addicts where over 2,000 people have been freed from addictions during its existence open every day. Also, you can visit any of over 200 ministries of the Embassy. Third, you can come to the Embassy of God and participate in God's work in Kyiv, Ukraine as a missionary. Fourth, you can come to Kyiv and attend the nine-month Bible school program at Joshua Missionary Bible Institute, where you will learn from leading ministers of the Embassy of God. Fifth, if it is in your heart, you can become a financial partner of God's work here and through this release the anointing and blessing of the Embassy of God upon your life. Sixth, you can purchase a wide variety of audio and video cassettes, CDs and books by Apostle Sunday Adelaja and other pastors of the Embassy of God. Seventh, you can get all this and other information at our website www.godembassy.org You've been watching the Embassy of God program from Kiev, Ukraine.